Spotlight. This is Akashwani. In the program Spotlight, we now bring you a discussion on the successful launch of ISRO NASA collaborative satellite NISAR. The participants are Dr. Guru Prasad, former ISRO scientist, and Lalima Aneja Dang, anchor. Indian Space Research Organization ISRO successfully launched NISAR, an Earth observation satellite, today evening using GSLV F-16 rocket from Satish Dhawan Space Center, Sriharikota. NISAR is a joint project between NASA and ISRO and is an Earth observation satellite. It was conceptualized way back 10 years ago and though it was planned to be launched earlier this year, the launch finally happened today. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All L40 engines generating nominal thrust. S139 motor ignited. Five seconds. That's the magnitude of, of, of the GSLV F16 NISAR mission. The deafening roar of GSLV Lift and beautiful silhouette brightening the Sri Harikota sky. Charo L40 Tata 4 booster S139 ka safal prajolan or GSLV F16 ka othapan dithiye promotion manch se or ye apne gantavi ki or barta hua. How will NISAR affect us as a country and the Earth as a planet? Well, let's talk more on this. And for that, we have with us Dr. Guru Prasad, former ISRO scientist. Welcome, Dr. Prasad, to Akashwani. Thank you very much. Namaskar. Dr. Prasad, we have a robust space program. We recently sent Group Captain Shukla as India's first astronaut on an international space station. We've had a very successful landing on the South Pole of Moon, which no other country could do as Chandrayaan-3 project. How is NISAR said to be a major milestone in the country's space program? No doubt, today's launch, that is the launch of GSLV F-16, which carried NISAR satellite into a very precise orbit, is a significant milestone uh, as far as the Indian space program is concerned, mm -hmm. which began very, very modestly in 1963 and November 21st. Because, you know, today's launch was picture perfect. Or, uh, it's a textbook launch. It was a textbook launch. And, you know, the satellite was carried to the precise height to which it was supposed to have been carried. And it was put into orbit in a, such a stabilized way Satellite scientists later, within a short while, they could able to stabilize the satellite very easily, in fact. Mm -hmm. So, since the launch was very perfect and the satellite being a very costly satellite, costing about $1.5 billion or so. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as you put it earlier, it has taken almost 11 years for the scientists to dial in this regard and to build this satellite. And the satellite, uh, since it has reached the proper orbit, it is a milestone indeed, no doubt about it. And well, let me add one more point. Sure. You know, we have three satellite launch vehicles today, which are quite big. One is PSLV, which is the workhorse. And the second one is GSLV, a Mark II, which we launched today. Third one is the heaviest and the most capable, that is LVM-3. So LVM-3 and PSLV had proved their versatility in the sense they were originally planned for something and they could able to be adapted for different missions. Today, GSLV has also proved Basically, this rocket was built to put a communication satellite into an orbit, intermediate ray orbit. Mm -hmm. But today it has launched an Earth observation satellite. So we have three rockets today, which are all the three of them are versatile. What else we want to call this event as a significant milestone in the Indian space program? Absolutely. And as you said, it was a picture perfect launch. So the entire team at ISRO and of course at NASA, they merit a huge, very huge congratulatory note. But not just us, but the ISRO chairman, V. Narayanan, also congratulated the scientists on this successful launch today. I am extremely happy to announce GSLV F-16 vehicle has successfully and precisely injected the NASA ISRO synthetic aperture radar satellite, NSR satellite, <laughs> weighing 2,393 kg into its intended orbit. Let me congratulate all the teams from ISRO and NASA JPL on this outstanding success. 
Well, Dr. Prasad, the satellite will be for the first time into a sun-synchronous polar orbit, an orbit in which satellite will scan over the same point on Earth at the same time each day. What is the significance of this? Could you please tell our listeners? See, before I say that, uh, you kindly note one point. Mm-hmm. When uh, uh, Dr. Narayanan, who is an expert in cryogenics, okay, mm-hmm. GSLV's third stage is cryogenic, we have to understand, which is a very, very efficient at very complex stage. And the fact that the laypersons, the common man should know that GSLV could able to achieve a velocity of 20, speed of 27 thousand kilometers per hour 27 thousand kilometers per hour i repeat within a short span of 18 and a half minutes and wow. injected the satellite in the proper orbit mm-hmm. now it has the satellite thanks to gsl wave 16 this uh, satellite has reached a polar sun synchronous orbit you know for a common man i would say the thing is if you make a spacecraft to pass over the poles Okay, Mm -hmm. you are revolving around the earth north south, north south like that, but earth below will be rotating from west to east. Mm -hmm. All you can do is under similar illumination conditions over a long period of time, you can observe the earth, entire earth almost. Mm -hmm. That is the idea behind putting an earth observation satellite into a polar sun synchronous orbit okay mm-hmm. when it yes. is in the polar orbit it can see almost see the entire globe as such and if you want the illumination conditions to be same over a long period of time you put it into polar sun synchronous orbit so this is the orbit to which we have been putting satellites since 1988 when we launched our first Earth observation satellite called IRS-1A, it was, of course, launched from the Soviet Union. From 1994, we have been putting such remote sensing satellites using our own PSLV. So this is no new thing to us. But the fact that why this was significant is this is a heavy satellite weighing almost 2,400 kilograms. Yes. And it is a sophisticated satellite carrying two types of radars. No other satellite of this type has yet been launched in the civilian sector carrying two types of radars. One built by NASA, one built by ISRO. No, not in the history of uh, space flight in the civilian sector. Such a satellite was built and launched. And the fact that we have launched it very precisely speaks volumes for India's space capability today. Right. Uh, Since it's an ISRO and uh, NASA collaboration, we have Casey Swells from NASA, who was also present during the launch. Let's see what she said. On behalf of NASA, I just I want to congratulate all of the teams. It has been just an incredible decade culminating in this moment from the technical collaborations, the cultural understandings, getting to know each other, building that team across continents, across time zones. I am so proud. I was so proud to be out there watching this launch dragonflies flying above it just picture perfect and uh, i could not be more proud of these teams but more so than that it really is a pathfinder for the relationship building that we see across our two nations you know across india the united states building upon decades of collaborations that already existed Dr. Prasad, you just said that it is a dual band satellite, one L band provided by NASA and S band provided by ISRO. Another thing is that this satellite can map up to one centimeter area of the Earth. So also the fact that NISAR is heavier and more sophisticated. Will all this help in predicting natural calamities because it's, it's observing the movement of the Earth's crust? Yes, definitely. You know, satellites have revolutionized our monitoring of the various aspects of the Earth. Thanks to anthropogenic activities, that is human activities, a sea earth surface has been constantly changing. Not that it was not changing earlier. Mm-hmm. Due to natural factors, it was changing. But to a certain extent, as far as certain aspects are concerned, they have been accelerated by the human beings. For example, taking away too much of groundwater, let us say that may lead to the land subsidence kind of thing. Hmm. And too much of global warming actually is making the polar ice sheets to melt. Forests are being depleted. Hmm. So these kind of things, satellites are helping us in monitoring these things. And to a certain extent, you know, let us take the case of 
weather prediction now satellites have revolutionized the field of weather prediction even in our own country hmm. every 15 minutes we are getting data using two of our satellites now this satellite with dual radars i mean carrying two radars one in l band which is at a lower frequency or higher wavelength provided by nasa and one s band which is indigenously built by india so using these two things they are complementary to each other what one does the other one will not do mm -hmm. so for example l band radar is very good at looking for subsurface things it can penetrate the foliage and what is below the thick tree canopy kind of thing it can see what is below the ground also it can see mm -hmm. at the same time for monitoring of the surface features let us say crops the forest uh, wealth and such things for that we can use s band radar any surface feature so since two both the radars are complementary to each other and they are very sensitive you can as you put it we can monitor if there is a change of 1 cm on the ground okay if there is a movement of 1 cm on in that scale then the satellite it can detect it and it can scan the entire earth it can it can see the cover the entire globe once in 12 days or even earlier in fact and you know the thing is every day it might be going around the earth 16 or 17 times mm -hmm. okay that is the kind of thing and the radars can be used day and night rain or shine in all weather conditions so this is a unique satellite indeed not that satellites are not there carrying radars india itself launched such a satellite a radar carrying earth observation satellite way back in 2012 we have two types of radar satellites but this is the first time two different types of radars are carried by a single satellite and it's a very 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 sophisticated satellite having an antenna which is 40 feet in diameter for the time being it is folded and it will be opened out a few days later so this is what makes NISAR very unique, I would say. Yes, so far we knew that about 400 satellites for 34 nations have been launched on India's launch vehicles. But this is now one step ahead. And as you mentioned that NISAR will provide risk assessment analysis. Two things, um, Dr. Prasad, A, how will this data be used by the researchers? Is it easy access and uh, will it be able to, will the researchers be able to process the data easily? And secondly, what is the mission life of the satellite? Let me answer the second question. The mission the life of the satellite is about three years, three to five years, let us say. That is the designed one. Mm -hmm. Okay, it may work even much further, in fact. And the second thing is, you know, for example, whatever the satellite sees through its radars, that data will be downloaded to a place in Alaska. Okay, Alaska in the United States, as far as L-band radar data is concerned. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. mainly that is the one which is that is sent to that American repository there in Alaska, in the state of Alaska. Right. As far as S-band radar data is concerned, the data will be downloaded at Shadnagar, let us say. It is very near to Hyderabad. Okay, right. it will be downloaded and, you know, it will be processed very quickly and they say that those who need the data, they will get the data within a few hours. That is what they say. And another thing is the data is free and it can be accessed by anybody. Free. Mm -hmm. It is an open source data. That is why this giant satellite mission, which is a wonderful example of international collaboration and cooperation, will help the entire entire humanity i would say so that is why you know that is where india's uh, uniqueness the usp comes of course both the countries have worked very well but the thing is as far as its part is concerned as far as launch is you know it is not easy yes absolutely you, it, to go uh, to leave the surface of the mother earth and to make something to go around the earth it is not easy you have to achieve a speed of 27 to 28 thousand kilometers per hour what is depending on what height at which you want to go around the earth hmm. that part has already been fulfilled and the panels have deployed already solar panels they can generate about four kilowatts of power and that is four thousand watts of power they have already been deployed they have started rotating and tracking the sun still let us wait and see let's hope for the best for the satellite to start working okay they have to do deployment of the antenna and many other tests they have to do then it will be ready 
to do its work thank you so much uh, dr guru prasad for talking to akashwani and throwing light on this amazing uh, nisa launch that we have had today thank you very much dr prasad you were listening to a discussion on the successful launch of isro nasa collaborative satellite nisar the participants were dr guru prasad former isro scientist and lalima aneja dang anchor spotlight 